Good morning. I'm Deputy Sheriff Sandy Atherton with the Bear County Sheriff's Department. One of my jobs is to make sure that you don't become a victim to a criminal. Today I'd like to talk about identity theft. Identity theft is one of the fastest crimes growing here in, the, in San Antonio. And unfortunately, it is also one of the more frequent crimes of senior citizens. Identity theft is the theft that keeps on taking. Identity theft can start from a simple burglary where somebody has broken into your house and not only taken the jewelry and the valuables, but he spent time in the house and he's picked up statements, personal financial statements. Now, what's a personal financial statement? A personal fin financial statement can be a bank statement. It's got your address, it's got your name, it's got your bank records in, it's got your bank account numbers. A personal financial statement can also be your medical records that come in at the end of the month or the records that you're keeping in your house, your Medicaid bills, anything that's got your social security number on it, your name, your address, your birth date, maybe where you were born, anything that a criminal can use, the little bits that they're picking up. Personal financial statements can be a blank check. A personal financial statement, believe it or not, can also be your social security card. One of the basic pieces of information in an identity theft case is one, your name, your birth date, your social security number, your address, your bank account, your driver's license. This is all basic information they use to create identity theft against you. You're saying to yourself, okay, well, that information has been out there for years. Yes, it has. And they're now using it through computers and through the Internet to get other personal information off you. They can go back and check to see what businesses you've owned. They can go back and find out your credit. They can go back and find out if you've ever had a criminal history. All this personal information is now becoming sensitive information. And it is bits and pieces like this that is used to build a profile of you, of your financial background. All they need is a name, a basic number, and within 20 minutes and spending less than $50 on the Internet, they can get the rest of the information on you. As I've turned around and said many times, the longer you stay on this earth, the more personal financial paperwork you've left out there, and it's all a matter of time before they gather it. Now, let me explain how this works. Once they get the basic information, your name, your address, maybe your bank account number, Usually the next thing that comes up is they will get a false ID. They will make a driver's license. They will show some type of identification with your name, address, maybe driver's license number, maybe something with your social security number. And from there, they will apply for credit. In a driver's license, sometimes they'll sub substitute their face on the driver's license for yours. Believe it or not, in some of our larger department stores now with just a driver's license, a social security number, and the basic sensitive information, they can go in there and apply for a credit and have a credit card in 20 minutes. $750 line of credit in less that time. Some of our biggest victims now of identity theft are children. You're asking yourself children. Children. I'm talking babies, two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old children that have already become victims of identity theft. How come? One, somebody gets hold of their name. Somebody gets their address. Somebody gets their social security number. When you're born, you have a social security number. You're giving it. Even though they may have never worked, they may not have a line of credit. The way it's looked at now is reversal. They don't have a line of credit, it's, but they don't have a good line, but they don't have a bad line. They have an untested line of credit. And most credit card companies, most financial organizations will at least start or give them a chance to get a good line of credit. They will issue them a credit card. They will issue them a line of credit, and they will start out. The problem with identity theft is once they get the information, they can take credit cards out in your name. They can take bank loans out in your name. And the, the problem is they just don't stay in one place. They'll buy, go out, They'll take a line of credit out in your name. They'll go to Houston. They will buy a boat and a trailer in your name with all the basic information where you live because where you live is your house, and your house is worth something. They'll get the credit line or they'll get the account number of your bank account. They'll use that. They buy a boat 
a trailer on credit. He takes that boat and trailer. He goes to Houston. He paid $30,000 for the boat. He'll sell it in Dallas, Fort Worth from the boat that he bought in Houston for $15,000 cash. And he'll move on. Usually it takes anywhere from 30 days to three months before identity theft victim finds out that they're being used, that they become a victim. And usually by this time it's because the, the bill collector is knocking on the door wondering where the money is. They can go online using credit cards that have been purchased and made in your names. They buy items. They buy airline tickets. They buy fabulous vacations. They buy uh, gifts for other people. They move on. They are hard to get. We catch an identity thief one out of 100 times. One out of 100. Considering that we catch a burglar one out of 20, one out of 100 is pretty good. And because they move from state to state, city to city, it makes it even harder to get a hold of them. Once they go from state to state, it becomes a federal problem. Most investigators, most federal investigators and state investigators usually don't start seriously looking at investigating an identity theft case until it's over seventy to $100,000. So if you become a victim for $30,000, there's a good chance the guy's going to get away with it. This is a tough crime to catch. This is a tough, tough, tough criminal to track down. You can limit your vulnerability of a victim. It's one, you get your information at the end of the month, whether it's a bill statement, bank statements, medical statements, personal financial uh, transactions in your mail. One, make sure that the mailbox it's going into is safe and secured. Two, once you get it, Look through your statements. See if there's anything different, whether it's a credit card charge onto it, whether it's somebody that could be prying into your personal financial matters. Two, if you need to keep that personal financial paperwork in your house, lock it up. Lock it up just like it was money. If you don't, don't just throw it in the trash can. Shred it. You would not believe on how many criminals go out there and walk through the dumps that go through the trash cans that pick up those credit card state or credit card applications that they mail out every month that people just look at and throw away. These people actually go out, pick these envelopes up out of the trash can, out of the dump, fill them out for you. They may change your, they may change your address. They may change uh, a telephone number, and they turn it in. And the next thing you know, they've got a credit card with your number on it. Shred it. Destroy it. When you're at the doctor's office, when you're at a business institution, they ask for personal financial information, start asking them, where's my information going? What are you going to do with it? Start asking the questions. I don't care if they try and say, well, we, we safeguard it. How many times have you heard on the news that personal financial paperwork, somebody's medical records, which we all know have all types of information, are being found in dipsy dumpsters or being found in the trash can because somebody threw them away? Just this morning in the Express News, in uh, mycentony.com, a bunch of medical prescriptions with people's names on were found in a trash can. Start asking where my personal information is going. And if you can't get the right answer, don't give them the information. Do not give them the information. Identity theft is up and growing. It is a nonviolent crime that takes more money away now than violent crimes. Be careful, be safe. Keep your first personal information close to you. Thank you.